Good morning. Okay, so we're going to work on how to add parts, uh, materials, uh, specifically into our price book on Service Titan. So first you want to navigate uh, to the price book module. So up here at the top bar, uh, it's just the dashboard, but price book is towards the end right over here. So we're going to click on that. Okay, so then this is the price book. Uh, over on the left here, we've got these different um, different tabs here. We're going to go to the Materials tab. Um, and the thing that I always like to do before I add in a new item is just type in that uh, part number or the SKU uh, to make sure it's not in the system already. So I've got a number of parts here that we're going to be working on. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that. Um, in, and let's just do a quick search. Nothing. Okay, so we need to add that into the price book. So on the top right hand side, we've got this blue button, add material, hit that, and then we've got this window here. So the first um, field is the code or the part number or the SKU. Okay, so that's going to be again, if you've got a part number or the SKU, um, that's where this is going to go. So we're going to put this in here. Uh, 212. Um, now, what I like to do to save a little bit of time is um, just because I'm a little more familiar with the system, is I will then copy this number. Okay, and you can do that by, you know, right clicking or, or, or doing, I think it's like Control C or something like that on, on a PC. I'm working on a Mac, so it's a little bit different. Anyways, you copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen and down here at the bottom left hand corner there is a blue button that says show slash hide inactive vendors we're going to open that up and it's going to show all of our vendors so we're adding uh, hearthstone uh, materials right now so we need to make sure to select the hearthstone vendor but if it's traps industries we'll select traps industries if it's a slaky brothers we'll uh, you know if it's like a duravent product or something we'll do that um, more so is wing sales, Kuma, so on and so forth. Uh, Hearth Classics. Um, all right, so Hearth Stone. So what you do is on the far right, there is a little box. You click that box, it'll it'll have a blue check mark. And then um, if we scroll up to the top, okay, so there's three different fields that we need to fill out here. The first field is part number. The next field is a memo. And the last field is the cost. And the cost is our cost, what we pay for this part. So in the part number, that's where our code or our SKU or our part number is going to go. So that number that we copied, we can just paste. And then in the memo, um, that's where our name is going to go. So the name of the part. So this particular part, um, which I don't even, I didn't even write down. That was bad on my end. Hold on one second, let me grab that. Okay, let's see, that was a 212. There we go. So that part is a latch um, for the front door. So this is a latch. This is for a heritage or tribute and a cascade. Okay. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, so once we've figured out a name, now names, um, you know, I try and use kind of the name that the vendor or the manufacturer uses. Um, try and kind of keep that consistent so when we're ordering or on the packaging, it's all kind of one-to-one. -one. Sometimes I will change it just because the manufacturer has really poor descriptions or names for things. We want it to make sense. We want to be able to search it. We want to know what it is. So if I typed in, you know, latch or door latch, um, I would want it to pop up, right? So like, so if I don't have the, the exact SKU number. Um, and then we kind of want to know what it's for too. And we're going to elaborate that in the description, but, um, 
if it's just a bunch of abbreviations, like the whole name is just this, let's let's elaborate a little bit. Let's use full words, because if the technicians are out in the field on their iPad trying to search for a latch, and it's abbreviated LTCH or something, they're not going to find it. So, and they're not going to know the part number most of the time either. So anyways, um, just make it clear so we kind of know what the part is. Now I'm going to copy that name and then I'm going to paste it here in the top of the description and then I'm going to come down here and also add it to the memo section of the vendor page. Um, so we'll add that in there. Okay. Then in the description, uh, I'm going to elaborate some more. So this is where we can take more detail. So these are abbreviated words. So any abbreviated words usually I will spell out. So for uh, heritage one, um, tribute and castle 10. So, um, yeah, and then if we have any other comes with coil spring. So sometimes there'll be additional details like on the vendor page or the manufacturer page or on the part description or something. You know, maybe it comes with a, it's a package and it comes with a bunch of different parts or there's dimensions involved. We want to add that in the description. We want to kind of give as much information about the part as we can. Um, just so that way it's easier to verify that we have the correct part uh, and what it all comes with. So I'm going to also add does not include handle. So it's a latch for the front door. It does not include the handle. Okay. So then we go to the price. So this is the retail price. This is what we're charging. If you don't know this um, price, if it wasn't given from the vendor, um, then please check with me before filling this out. Uh, for Travis Industries, we always work off of MSRP. For Kuma, it's always MSRP. And for Slakey, it's a 1.75 multiplier on whatever our cost is. So we look up what our cost is, and then we just times that by 1.75, and that gives us our sale price. Um, and for different vendors is different things, but those are the most common ones. Um, I actually got the retail price, the suggested retail from Hearthstone, and that's what we're working off here is $46. Okay, member price we leave blank, blank add-on price we leave blank, member add-on price we leave blank, hours we're not doing anything. This is mostly reserved for services, not materials. And then we get down to cost of sales account. And general ledger account. So the cost of sales account or COG account, so if you select here, you're going to have these different accounts, and we want to select the Hearthstone expense or cost of goods sold. Um, select that, and then for the general ledger account, this is going to be sales account. So we have to scroll down here to where it says sales and find Hearthstone, and this is going to be the income account, okay? So the, these things make it make sure so when we sell items and then this gets transferred to our QuickBooks account that they go in the right place. So these are important to make sure that we get the cost of sales as the, the cost of goods sold and then the general ledger account as the income account, the sales uh, income account. Okay, And if you do not see the vendor on here, um, you know, I mean, we've got, we should have pretty much everything, but say we get a new vendor or there's a vendor we use on a very rare occurrence and they're not in this system, we're going to have to create that. That's going to be a separate video. going to have to go ahead and get a hold of me and we can, we can make that happen. But if you don't see it, just go ahead and stop. We're going to have to figure that out, get the other uh, backend stuff figured out first before moving forward. Okay, next thing, category. So this is really important. If we do not select a category, it will not show up in our POS side of things. So we will not be able to find this part when we're doing in-store sales or, or sales through our POS system. So uh, this is a wood stove part. So we're gonna go down to appliance parts, wood stove parts. Um, if it's a piece of chimney pipe, uh, then you'll see chimneys and liners. Um, there's relearn parts, there's masonry, 
uh, work, there's chimney liner, there's class A chimney. So just find the category that best fits. If you feel that there's multiple categories, like maybe you know, a hearth pad, or if you're unsure, there's a miscellaneous install or miscellaneous mater materials, you can choose multiple categories, that's fine. And if you're a little unsure, you can always ask as well. Uh, and for actual appliances, we got those all categorized by fuel use of wood, pellet, oil, gas, electric, so on and so forth. Okay, unit of measure. Um, this I'll usually just is just one. Um, if if this like if we have to purchase a package, so sometimes like uh, washers for a door handle, they come in a package of eight. So I'll say um, package of eight or PKG eight, um, just so we know that the um, the package uh, is yeah comes comes as an eight. All right, so taxable. All materials are taxable, so we need to make sure if we're adding a material, um, whether it be a part or a unit or a piece of chimney, fire brick, you know, hearth products, all materials are taxable, so we need to make sure to click that. Do not need to worry about deduct as job costs. Do not need to worry about exclude from price book. And then we've got image. So a lot of times on the vendor websites like Travis Industries or, or Slicky, we can pull photos for these parts right off of there, save them to your computer, and then upload them uh, to here. Um, I don't have a part for, or a picture for this part, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to a new tab, and I'm gonna type in hearthstone door latch, and I'm just gonna see, uh, pull up images there, and I'm just gonna see what kind of images we've got. So I know that this is, um, uh, this right here is what we're, what we've got. So I'm gonna save, uh, save image as, and I'm going to save this um, as Hearthstone Door Latch. And I'm going to put it in, I have a folder in Nextcloud called ST Pricebook Photos. So if your computer is connected to Nextcloud, you can simply just search that folder by typing in ST Pricebook. And then it will, that folder will come up. You can select that folder and we'll save that photo right to that folder um, just so it stays organized. Then what we can do is come back to the Pricebook, go to Add Images. I've already got this folder pulled up, and then we can just search uh, Hearthstone um, Door Latch, and there it is. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now, the last thing we have to do, I uh, don't need to worry about videos or conversion tags, so we need to add our cost in the vendor section. Now, what you can do if it's easier is you can just fill this out, fill this out, fill this out, fill this out, go down the line, and then do all the vendor stuff at the bottom. I like to just save time, and as I'm copy and pasting things, I come down here and fill this inform information out. Uh, it just saves a little bit of time, but you do not have to do it that way. You can do it one uh, line at a time as you're going down and then do this at the very end. That is fine too. But our cost for that part was 2668. So we're going to type that 2668. And that is all the information we need. So then we'll scroll up to the top and there'll be a save button. We're going to hit that save button. And now that part is saved. Uh, one last thing is if we are um, adding a, a number of parts and they're all from like the same vendor, like Hearthstone, like I've got uh, five parts I need to add here. Uh, I find that it saves a little bit of time to just duplicate the one that I just inputted and then just change my, my code or my, and my name and my description and the cost. But we can leave the general uh, ledger accounts, um, the categories usually can stay the same, taxable, um, change the photo as needed and change the vendor information as needed. But it'll save just a little bit of time if you just duplicate it, because some of the fields will already be filled out for you if you get if that part is from the same vendor. Um, 
and sometimes if there are a lot of the same numbers and maybe there's one number different or or something like that then you just gotta simply change that one number in the code or change that one number in the name so on and so forth so there you go that's adding parts into or adding materials rather into our price book